Hello guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're gonna review Nikon D80 DSLR camera and we're gonna figure out whether this camera is still relevant, can it take good photos still in 2022 or not. If you are new to my channel, consider subscribing it and don't forget to press the notification icon. So this is how this camera looks like. I am having the 18105 kit lens on this camera and this lens is an excellent performer it's a very good all-round lens goes all the way from 18 to 105 so it gives a very good zoom range so it's a really nice travel friendly lens and the build quality of this camera is excellent it is actually very solid and when you hold it in your hand it feels like a professional camera and it is indeed a professional camera even though this camera was launched in 2006 so it's almost 16 year old but when it was launched in 2016 at that time it was one of the top of the line camera it used to be very very expensive but right now you can get this camera used for roughly around 80 us dollar along with the kit lens which is such a good bargain price for this camera this camera have a 10 megapixel CCD sensor. It's not a CMOS sensor. And the good thing that I find with the CCD sensor is that the colors are really nice and natural compared to the CMOS sensor. And the kind of photos that I get with this camera are simply stunning. It looks excellent actually. If you talk about the ISO range on this camera, it goes from 100 to 3200. So it is not the best camera when it comes to low lighting situation. So consider using an external flash or maybe use a 50mm f1.8 lens or maybe use it in the daytime only rather than using it in the night because this is not the camera that you should use in the night because it is horrendous when it comes to low light performance. Beside that, it can shoot three frames per second. So don't use this camera if you want to shoot your kids playing sports at the school or you want to shoot wildlife or bird photography. Not the camera for that kind of photography, but for portrait photography, along with the 50mm kit lens, this can make great result. If you talk about the dynamic range, it is not the best. It is around 11.2 dynamic range, but this camera has exposure bracketing. So using the exposure bracketing, you can actually take different exposure shots and later on combine them in Lightroom and make a really nice high dynamic range photo. This camera can shoot only photos, no video whatsoever. So if you need a camera that can also shoot video, so don't go for this camera. However, one really good thing with this camera is that it has a built-in focus motor inside the body of the camera. So you can use all the older Nikon glass, like for example, all the AFD glasses and all the AF glasses. And those lenses are very, very cheaply available on eBay and in the secondhand market. You can get the 50mm f1.8 D lens for roughly around 50 US dollar. And the kind of stunning result that you can get with those lenses are still very very good if you compare them with the latest lenses so if you have this camera you have access to all the older lenses which are really very cheap so that is one good thing and one of the best unique selling point of this camera still in 2022 let me now show you how this camera looks from close up so this is how this camera looks from the top so you have a top LCD screen where you can see all your settings. You have dedicated buttons and dials for each and everything. You have a dial in the front using which you can adjust your aperture. And then from the back, it looks like this. And over here as well, you have a dial to adjust the shutter speed. And you have dedicated buttons and dial for everything. So you don't have to go too much into the menu to adjust your settings. You have only one SD card slot and the SD card goes over here. And on this side, you have some ports if you want to connect this camera to a laptop or to an external monitor or to an external power source. And on the back, it looks like this. It has a very nice and huge battery. And the battery is actually pretty good. If you charge the battery fully, you can take like 600 or 700 shots. And see the build quality. It looks really nice and solid. It's an excellent camera actually. Along with this lens, it takes really great photos. If I talk about the autofocus on this camera, in the photography, the autofocus is pretty nice and snappy. This camera has 11 autofocus points and they work pretty well in photography. I haven't faced any problem whatsoever. However, in low lighting situation, it can struggle a bit in focusing. Now, let me put onto the screen some of the photos that I've taken with this camera and all the photos that I took 
were using this 18 to 105 kit lens. Some of the photos were taken in low lighting situation, some were taken in better lighting situation. However, I was really impressed with the kind of photos that you can get with this camera, even though it is 16 year old, but the kind of image that I get with this camera, it doesn't look like a 16 year old image. If you are using the 50 mm prime lens with this camera, you can get really nice background blur and bokeh, and you can use those photos on your social media, you can do portfolio, you can do like even paid work with this camera even in 2022. Because 10 megapixel is still not very very less, even with 10 megapixel you can make really large print and for Instagram and Facebook and other social media you hardly need more than 2 megapixel. So I would say in photography I would give it really very very high ranking. And the only downside that I feel in this camera is that it lacks the auto ISO option when you are using it in fully manual mode or aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode. So that is one really annoying feature because you have to change the ISO if the lighting situation is changing. However, you can put this camera in aperture priority mode and fix the ISO and then it will compensate for the lighting by changing the shutter speed. But if it had this auto ISO working in all those modes, it would have been a really very very good camera for photography but other than that point I would say this is an excellent camera. Now the final question should you buy this camera in 2022 or not? I would say if you are on really tight budget and if you need a camera only and only for photography and if you are a fan of older cameras you like to get great results even with older camera then you can definitely go for this camera because this camera is very very cheap it won't break your bank and the best part about this camera is that you can use all the autofocus AF and the AFD lenses which you cannot use with the D3000 and 5000 series camera. So this is a better choice. But since this camera don't shoot video, so consider buying this only if you want a camera for photography. If you are an absolute beginner and if you want to do photography, you want to learn the basics of photography, this is still a pretty decent camera to start your photography journey. So I can definitely recommend this camera even in 2022 because still you can get great results with this camera and even few years from now, I would say you would still be able to get great results with this camera. All right guys, so this was the short video. If you like the video, please share it and like it. And if you haven't still subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the notification icon. I will see you in a new video.